Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, talking fishing. If it's facts about fishing that you want to know, then tune in, folks, cause this is the show. We'll show you all the right bait to use. So sit right back, you got nothing to lose. Doesn't really matter if it's trout or carp, flathead marlin or a gummy shark. Listen to the guys and you can't go wrong. They'll be talking about fishing till the cows come home. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. show coming your way tonight with a couple of special guests joining us. Before introducing them, I'd like to say a little something about fishing in Victoria. Over the past two decades, Victoria has been spoilt as fishing and boating has been improved in an unprecedented way. In particular, over the past eight years, no other Australian state or territory has had the investment like which has been provided by the Victorian government to grow recreational fishing. Sometimes we forget how good we've got it. Let's take a look at the map of Australia. My friends in South Australia can't go fishing this weekend for snapper because there's a ban. My friends in Tasmania couldn't go fishing for calamari two weeks ago because there was a ban. And my mate who is in, on holidays in Hamilton Island this week can't catch a Spanish mackerel up there because there's a ban on catching them at the moment. Overfishing is rife across Australia, except for Victoria. Let's reflect on how good we've got it. The nets are gone from Western Port, Port Phillip and Gippsland Lakes. Those buyouts cost nearly $50 million. This year, 10 million fish were stocked in Victorian waters. A new native fish hatchery has been built and you no longer have to line the pockets of councils or other boat ramp managers just to launch your boat. You can rest assured your boat licence, boat registration and your fishing licence money all go towards making your fishing better. My mate in South Australia, Shane Mensforth, can only dream of the South Australian government introducing a fishing licence. They know how good we've got it. Yes, the world has had its challenges over the past two years, Many parts of the world are still experiencing challenges, but we're not here to talk about that. When it comes to fishing and boating, Victoria is the envy of Australia. And that is a direct result of the Victorian government's investment and good management of our fisheries. Tonight, I hope we unveil what the next chapter looks like in making Victoria a better place to go fishing and boating. It's a very big welcome to Nikki Duxton and Adam Ring. Thanks, Dave. What a speech. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well. It makes you proud to be a Victor Victorian. It does. It does. Yeah. Um, this journey's been going for a while, and um, we have got a good every week. We show mm. people's catch of the weeks. So we're not going to do that. Uh, no regular segments tonight because we've got some special guests, but it's a big show. And Adam, I mean, you're, you're travelling around the state now. You're just seeing how good fishing is all around the state, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, that's right. And I know even recently we've been experiencing difficulties with floods and weather events mm. that are unprecedented, unprecedented as well, yet still we see fishing grow and we see more people heading back towards Gippsland and places like that who have done it pretty tough and that's still going to continue to grow over the next four years and beyond. This is not a short term project. Absolutely. All right, special guests. Uh, no stranger to the program. Only here a couple of weeks ago, the Minister for Fishing and Boating, Sonia Kilkenny. Welcome, Sonia. Welcome Thanks. back. Thank you very much. It's great good, to be back. Good to see you. It's um, campaign mode and you're going to tell us a little bit about what's uh, in store should Labor be re-elected at the election? Yep, we've got a bit of news for you tonight. It must be big because you brought the boss in. Brought someone along. The Premier of Victoria. Welcome, Daniel Andrews. Very good to be here. Uh, when you two are both in the room, it means there's something uh, big to be announced and some really, really good things. But um, this, Daniel, it's for Adam, you and I, this started a while back. Um, let's have a look, 2014. This, now, I love looking back because uh, we're going to get a photo up, I think, here. We've all aged. Only eight years, <laughs> right? <laughs> we have all aged. That was, um, in fact, that was eight years and one day ago, would you believe? Wow. There you go. I looked up the date. <laughs> uh, now, Neil Mitchell's ve he's texting already. He's very, very jealous of that photo. But anyway, that's... The There's <laughs> no other place to make fishing announcements than talking fishing. Exactly. Oh. Exactly. So, so that's that one. So we're going to get that out of the way. Now, 
the other thing is we, we want to pay a little bit of tribute to Jala Pulford, the longest serving uh, fishing and boating minister. Now, when uh, 2014 rolled along, Jala was the minister for agriculture and fishing still sat under that. But we just wanted to reflect back on, um, we used to cross into her kitchen. I think you remember that from four years ago. We used to cross back, uh, cross into her kitchen. Have a, you always got a list on the fridge, you know, you've got to tick it off. So <laughs> let's, ha let's go back to the 2014 list. Let's have a look at this. And I've, I think we've all got a copy here. Banned commercial netting in Port Phillip Bay. Done, save Lake Tolondo. Now, um, we did that short term, but then there was no rain for quite a while. Um, guess what? It's, it's actually receiving water right now. It's, yeah. it's just absolutely fantastic. Marine stocking trout cod. You can see the rest on your screen there. We won't go through them all, but um, oh, the poor old barramundi in the hazelwood. That was, that was a great delivery for uh, then a power station. They tried to be, yeah. So anyway, but, um, but all, all great things. Um, then we go to 2018. Now this, so this is the big test because the list, I think, tripled in 2018. Let's have a look at the 2018 list. This was the fishing list just for uh, for Jala. And grow fish stocking to 10 million per year by 2022. Sonia? Tick. We got that? Yep, mm -hmm. got it. Wow. $7 million native fish hatchery. Tick. Tick. Stock Murray cod golden and silver perch into suburban lakes. Tick. Tick. Stock prawns in lake. You they're like all, this one. Yeah. <laughs> the prawns went into the lake ties. They're all ticks, mate. Yeah, they're all, well, they're all ticks. Yeah, they've <laughs> all been delivered, every one of them. <laughs> they have every been. I mean, invest in fishing platforms, fish cleaning tables, so far. I mean, Hastings, I don't know. if Anyone's seen the, the one down was, at Hastings? I was there on Sunday. I used the facilities on oh, Saturday oh. afternoon at Hastings, that and they an, are brilliant. An amazing fish cleaning table. Um, fishing, recreational fishing number plates. I know. Jala loved that one. Yeah. <laughs> she, I think she was looking after Vic Rhodes at the top, whatever that yeah, portfolio was, sure. and that matched in really, really well. So, um, uh, there's a uh, there's one on here that's ticked. I don't. What does this mean? Consider opening Tarrigo and Devil Bend. You, did you consider it? Of course, it's We've got a tick. We considered it. He's <laughs> 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 got a tick, so well, fair enough. Uh, do you think there might be some more news on that tonight? Maybe. Maybe, yeah. All right, okay. One, a couple of my favourites here, a couple of my favourites, Kingfish Reef. Now, so the, I, I think the, um, oh, sorry, we didn't go to the boating one. Sorry, let's go to the boating page. Lots lots of stuff here. Boating list, uh, they're yelling in my ear that we forgot the boating list. Allocate all boat licence and registration fees to improve boating facilities and safety, Daniel? 100%. Done that, yep. Better boating fund. Uh, establish the better boating fund to facilitate urgent, yep, done. Yep. Um, Abolish parking and launching fees at Victorian boat ramps. I think that took you about less than a year. Yeah, we didn't waste any time because it's hundreds of dollars and families yeah, yeah. don't need to be paying it and they aren't now. Yep. A bloke uh, called Jeff Fraser told me that today. Um, saved him, like just this season alone, about $300. Yeah. So, um, dedicated boating infrastructure authority, better boating Victoria. Uh, eight new casual public berths. Yes, they're all, in fact, there's more than eight all around Victoria. So that's all ticked. A couple of my favourite ones. Kingfish Reef, let's have a look at this. Um, this. That's Kingfish Reef being lifted off a ship down on the Mornington Peninsula, just off Point Nepean. Um, Adam, the Kingfish are gonna be on that, aren't they? Yeah, that's summer? right, and we'll see, yeah, we'll see the benefits of that immediately as we come into Kingfish season over Christmas and beyond. Mm -hmm. That's gonna be a bit of a hot spot, I think. Not It'll long. feature heavily, Dave, on hot spots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Arcadia is another one. It's, I, I, if you look back in time, um, I got a roll. I won't. I won't say the roll I got, but um, I remember rocking up to Snobs Creek that Jeff Kennett had sold. By the way, he'd, he'd privatised that, and and he then, sold a lot of things. Yeah, and it stopped producing good quality fish. Mm. Steve Brax brought it back, yeah. and you you look at that now, and it's a magnificent facility. It's absolutely at capacity and needs a bit of an upgrade. Mm. And we're going to ask you about that shortly, but. Um, now there's a new native fish hatchery, Arcadia, and Jala always said you're going to be able to see this fish hatchery from the moon. <laughs> Let's have a look at it. That's the property, and you can see the Goulburn River running at the back there, but that's the Arcadia, Arcadia property. It's a magnificent farm. Um, the two circles there, the, the top one is uh, the brood ponds and the plankton ponds, and the bottom circle is, I've named it the Arcadia Pondage, but that's going to be a public 
place to go to where you can actually go fishing and, and there's a whole discovery centre being built. So, um, and can I just pay that, like I said before, a, a special tribute to Jala Pulford Absolutely. because Jala, um, I think, was in the portfolio for about six years. And Sonia, I've just got to pass, it's like passing the baton, right? But um, <laughs> if you don't mind. Very, oh. <laughs> very big. You've got big boots big too. Big boots to They're about size oh, six. They are a so, big set oh of boots, gosh. actually. Well, I actually wow. don't think Jala has worn them, but they're quite <laughs> big <laughs> boots to fill. So, Thank, you, yeah. Thank you, Jala. Thank you, Dave. Yeah, but, yes, but oh. seriously, you know, thank, thanks to Jala, and um, it, it's you know absolutely fantastic. Um, it's it's been a great eight years. But uh, after the break, we're going to talk about the next four years. That's all coming up next on Talking Fishing. Talking fishing. We know what you'd rather be doing. We know what you really got in mind. We know you'd rather be out fishing. And today's the day you're gonna wet a line. Cause every day's a good day. Stop wishing. Every day's a chance to drift away. Talking Fishing. Welcome back to Talking Fishing. Special guest in the studio, the Minister for Fishing and Boating, Sonia Kilkenny, Premier of Victoria, Daniel Andrews. And I'm getting my butt kicked because I didn't mention it is to our 200th episode. Ooh, what Congratulations a to yeah, you, Dave. Well done, oh, guys. Adam, you've been here for every, every single one of them as well. So uh, well done to you too. But it's been a, an eight year journey, 200th episode uh, tonight, which is a pretty good milestone. We're pretty happy with that. Um, I'm going to handball it over to you, Premier, and um, announce away. Very good. Well, you know, we just saw then all those ticks, mm. uh, a big agenda, an ambitious agenda uh, that the fishing and boating community helped to write. And that's why it's so popular. That's why it's worked so well. But having achieved all of that, it's all about the next step. And elections are about a positive plan for the future. So mm. I, I chose this show to be here because there's no Thank greater you. advocates on behalf of fishing and boating and all the the joy that comes to so many people by being outside and being involved in this mm. sport, pastime, hobby, passion, whatever you want to call it. We're going to make, if we're re-elected, we're going to take the biggest next step ever. This is such a big package. I'm delighted and proud to announce that we will invest $96 million wow. in what I think is the biggest and most comprehensive fishing and boating package that's ever been put before the Victorian community mm. because Having made those so many investments to this point, so much reform, uh, we now really have to push off and make sure that we've got uh, as many people involved, the best facilities for everybody, uh, and just as we need to see our fish stocks continue to rise, the number of places where you can go and fish, we also want to see more and more people involved, um, hmm. um, uh, most particularly kids. Yep. So yeah. nearly $100 million over the next four years. and. All those ticks show your viewers that when we make commitments, we honour them. Absolutely. When we say we're going to do things, we get on and do them. Mm. This is a real passion for us. Uh, and having come this far, we just have to go that extra step further. Yep. There's, um, there's been a little bit of criticism around some of the jetties that are closed at the moment. And uh, I, I think everybody understands it's, it's been a, prob pro uh, sorry, a problem for decades. Uh, it's a bit like the boat ramps where, you know, for decades, no one did anything about boat ramps. They're fixed now, but you've got some announcements about piers. I'm very, very pleased to be able to announce that as part of that package, that $96 million, there'll be $40 million to rebuild Dramana Pier, St Leonard's Pier, and Warneet South and North Jetties. Uh, this comes, of course, on top of very significant investments we've made over those eight years in lots mm. of other. The physical infrastructure that's so important to see more and more families getting involved yeah. uh, and to make that as safe and as good as it can possibly be. Now, I don't for a moment pretend that that's all the work that has to be done. They're important. That will happen and we'll waste no time doing it. Yep. But there'll be more and then more after that. And that's why having every single dollar that comes into us going back out to fishing and boating is so important yep. because it means that we're, by law, we all have to keep investing. Yep. Uh, so that they are really important investments for those communities and for people who use them. Uh, but I'm certain that you'll have others on the list 
It'll be a very long list, and hopefully we can be back here in another four years with a whole lot more ticks, yep. and indeed an equally ambitious agenda for the future. Adam, what do you reckon uh, Big Al will be saying about <laughs> Warnoot right now? Oh, I think Al will be jumping for joy. He spent way too many hours of his day trying to work out what's happening with the Warnoot jetty. So, uh, Premier, I think that's a that's going to be another big tick on the list at the end of the next run if we get I, I absolutely know Chris Brain too down in yep. the pen has, yeah, been has been advocating for it. Dramana and, and getting that one going. I mean, um, you know, before getting into politics, he only worked down the road at the Dramana drive-in and look at how he's blossomed into a, you know, a, a good politician, such a great local advocate for the peninsula. And um, if you spend a bit of time down there, you, you do, you notice the difference that Chris has made down there and you do. Abs absolutely great Dave for that is, community. Uh, lucky enough to represent a really beautiful part of our state. And yeah, he's, yeah. A, he's a great champion on behalf of his community. He, yeah. He's forever lobbying me, uh, always about all sorts of things. Yep, absolutely. And uh, Dramana Pier, good one to see that. I know that community down there, you know, they've contacted us plenty of times and that it's, it's one of those little, it's a different sort of pier. I don't know. I mean, I used to go there when I was a kid with my grandparents and you'd eat fish, buy fish and chips across the road from Dramana Pier, go and eat them as you walk along the pier and then it's just one of those little iconic piers that needs, needs to be rebuilt. Well, I think mm. it kind of shows how important those piers are to the local communities, regardless yeah, yeah, of where they exactly. are, around yeah. the peninsula or heading yeah. into the Ballerine, wherever it is, whenever there's an issue with the pier, the noise is so loud mm. to, to both your offices and to us here at Talking Fishing yeah. as well. So I think it's, uh, it's a, it's a no-brainer and it's great to see that sort of money going into continuing That's right. uh, yeah. to grow. There's so many land-based anglers out there, so it's going to yep. be... Yeah. yeah, great for them. Yeah. yeah. Do you know I've got a um a pier in my electric called Seaford Pier. Yeah. And we um rebuilt that four years ago and every anniversary on the rebuild we have a sausage sizzle is down that the right? pier to get the local community because it is. It's yeah. Yeah. what the community yeah. loves and it's they own mm. it. Yeah, you know, that's they, right. they one of the best own. piers in Portville Bay for garfish too, so absolutely okay. fantastic. Good thing before um, you leave before you leave piers. Yeah. It's forty million dollars, it's not a cost, it's an investment for all the reasons we've talked yeah. about. But there's also tradies that are getting work out of this. Yeah, mm. And true. often smaller firms. Yep. So it's about making sure they've got a strong order book because yeah. the people who build do this work, yep. that's, that's just as important yeah. as everybody who benefits from their high levels of skill. So yeah. there's every good reason to do this. Yep. And I'm sure there's many more that need to be done, but yeah. this is a really good next step. Yep. All right, Habitat, let's move on to that one. It's two and a half million dollars that we'll invest if we're re-elected uh, for our marine, estuarine and freshwater fisheries. Uh, this is, of course, on top of the two and a half million that through the, the Go Fish Vic uh, initiative, those commitments we made last mm. time, all those ticks, uh, in, and particularly in relation to Port Phillip Bay, and you had the reef development up there earlier yeah. on. Yeah, um, amazing. Uh, as well as uh, some restoration works for you know, shellfish reef in Port Phillip Bay. All of that is incredibly important. This is just builds on that. Yep. But we're not going to tell fishers where that money should be spent. We want to do some consultation. We want to work with, awesome. with yep. those who know this best. Uh, and that two and a half million dollars, uh, Victorian Fishing Authority will work to, to work out where that can be best spent so that we've got the best habitat mm. uh, for, 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 for healthy fisheries uh, so that we can be attracting more and more people to take up this amazing pastime. I think, it, it, so this is probably, I think, three elections in a row now that artificial reefs, that, that sort of habitat's been promised. Before Joe Helper, I don't think there'd been an artificial reef put in for nearly 20 years. You know, and it, it's just turned around now that these things, you know, everyone said oh, no government will ever put another artificial reef into a bay because environmentally it was too mm. hard to get that mm. past. Well, it's here we are, we're actually yeah. really, really restoring the, the habitats in Port Phillip and Western Port and other places. So it's absolutely fantastic to see. Um, all right, this is a big one. Mm -hmm. uh, I just got it written down here, little angler kids. What's that all about? Kits, kits. Well. Uh, as as a father of three, uh, I know Auskick is was in our household a really big thing, mm. uh, and we think that there's an equivalent. Our little anglers package is all about an Auskick for fishing. Yep. So wow. this will support sixty thousand little anglers with a kit uh, for, for primary school age kids. It's one and a half million dollars, uh, and it's all about that bond between older fishers and younger ones mm. uh, taking it up that spark, getting involved, becoming active and picking up that love affair and having it for life. We think that's really important, being outside, yeah. connecting. Really simple thing, but very, very important. Now, 
I can't take the credit for this. This is all the work of the minister. Yep. She came up with this wonderful idea. So I might ask her to talk about what's in the kit, how we'll okay. distribute them. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. think of it as Oz Kick for fishing. <laughs> and you get an fantastic idea. Yeah, yeah. Um, I love this because yeah. um, I think of, of fishing and I think of when I think I've spoken before when my son and I go out fishing and you think, what other time do you have just to sit back and mm. kind of chew the fat with your own child? Mm. You know, nothing else going on with it, just a, a line in the water um, and time with your child. It's, it's amazing. Mm. Um, and so just being able to provide these little angler kids, so 60,000 of them to primary school aged kids. It'll have um, the fishing rod, the reel, a tackle box and a a kids fishing guide as well, oh, telling yeah. kids Great, yeah. where the best places are to go fishing, where the fish has been stocked. Yep. Just giving them that um, opportunity to, to love fishing and yeah. to share yeah. that special time with family. Biggest investment ever yep. in, in our youth and, and, yep. and the next generation of fishers, that's yep. amazing. Yep. I know there's a lot of people at home, yeah. I know who they are, yeah. that, are, that would be absolutely wrapped. I mean, this has been the envy you know, the Australian Fishing Trade Association, Adam, yeah. you know, they've been trying to get a program going uh, Australia-wide and, and uh, you just can't unless you've got a government that's willing to do that. So, um, ab absolutely fantastic. Um, so, so is there, is there going to be events associated, associated with that? Or how, how do you roll yeah. them out? What are you so gonna we're, do? we're going to work with schools about yeah. how best we might roll this out. Sure. Um, what kids are going to get them. Yeah. Um, but we'll work with the community in, in yeah. how best to roll this out and, yeah. and where the demand is and, and yeah. the need is and everything. But, um, you know, I can't stop smiling. I love this. Yeah. I love yeah, this Yeah, I think it's great. And yeah. just really yeah. being able to provide yeah. this opportunity to kids who might not otherwise get this opportunity yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah. All right, I can see what the next one is, but we've got to go to a break. The next one is going to blow people away. It's probably, I don't know, it's probably going to bring a tear to my eye. <laughs> to, that's all I'm going to say. That's coming up next on Talking Fishing. Talking Fishing. Welcome back to Talking Fishing, our 200th episode. Uh, we started in October 20, 000, uh, 2014, sorry, <laughs> and uh, it's, yeah, it's been a big eight years and 200 episodes. We are joined uh, this evening by the Minister for Fishing and Boating, Sonia Kilkenny, Premier of Victoria, Daniel Andrews, announcing uh, if they're re-elected what they will do for fishing and boating. Now, Premier, you are on this program four years ago. I want to re-show you something that you said back in 2018. Let's have a look at this. We've got an opportunity, I think, to allow kayakers and other smaller craft with uh, electric motors onto a whole lot of different waterways that they're currently not allowed to be part of. Okay. Uh, I have, I've got a list. Yes, this show's all about lists. So right? the list. So <laughs> list the on, list. My, on, my, on my list, there's a couple that aren't here, and I want to say something about that at the end, okay. but uh, Tullaroop, Lauriston, Hepburn, Barker's Creek, Upper Colliban and Malmesbury reservoirs. Mm -hmm. They'll all be, uh, for those smaller craft with uh, electric motors and kayaks, we think that's just a, a smart thing to do. Again, yeah. opening up access, allowing more and more families to be able to engage in spaces that really belong to them ultimately. Yeah. Um, Tarago's not on there. I know, and that's something that you and I have talked about, Devil Bend as well. We've just got a yeah. bit, little bit more consultation to go through. I'm very keen to make Tarago happen if we can. Yeah. Now we gave you a tick for considering it. Yes. How'd you go? Well, I said that I wanted to have a look at it and see yeah. whether I could get it done. And I'm very pleased to be able to say that if we're re-elected, we'll invest $12.4 million to uh, have motorised boats and for recreational f and recreational fishing on Tarago Reservoir. We think that's just the right thing to do. It's 
going to be amazing for so many people who, who will be able to utilise it, mm. comes in a couple of parts. So taking the time to do it properly, to look at it, to assess it, we've got to make sure that we get the balance right between rec fishing, other people spending time, you know, enjoying, as I said four years ago, an mm. environment that they own yep. belongs mm. to all of us, as well as protecting our pristine water quality because we mm. know how important our catchments are. So there's $8 million so that Melbourne Water can upgrade their water treatment plant yep. and that's what allows people to use that um, reservoir, use that catchment. Uh, then there's $3.5 million for a new boat launching facility, a new toilet block, so that there's facilities there as well. Yep. Uh, this is just going to be fantastic. So it's a single lane concrete boat ramp, floating pontoon jetty alongside the boat ramp, uh, 20 car and trailer parking spaces, which will be free of course, uh, <laughs> and 10 single car spaces also, uh, as well as customised parking arrangements to enable rigging and tie down space wow. away from the ramp. Wow. So Tarago is going to happen if we are re-elected, because we've done the work, we've listened, we've got a clear plan, uh, and in partnership with Melbourne Water, I think this is going to be fantastic. Ads on it. You've got yeah. a million questions. <laughs> I, no, I do. I do. But before we get to those, Dave, yeah. uh, just quickly put into words how you're feeling right now because I know yeah. that you've spent a lot of time oh, into the pre-production yeah. just to get to a point where it can be actually, actually, do you mind? I've got a little video yeah, I, I, awesome. I was going to show that will show uh, A, the, the, the place, and B, the fish. So let's have a look at this. So let me talk a little bit about the reservoir first. The Tarago Reservoir is located uh, north of Warrigal uh, in West Gippsland. It's approximately 100 kilometres east of Melbourne, so easily a day trip for visitors from Melbourne. And when you get to see some of the photos of the fish very shortly that are in this reservoir, this is certainly a destination that people could travel interstate to and almost international to, because uh, if it ends up being as good as I think it will be, it will be well known in the trout circles for you know for a, a, a unique place to go fishing. Now I must say that those fish, I did catch them as they were electrofished. Right? <laughs> so so, so I, I, went in, I went in for a day with the scientists to, to survey the population. They were in there for about three or four days and it's the oldest population of wild brown trout in Australia. Wow. It's the largest wild brown trout, so as in length, you know, the, yep. these fish were well over 60 centimetres and every five metres there was another one. This is in the river because they come up the river to spawn, they go back into the lake. Um, they're going to need protection, Adam, obviously, but um, wow, I'm saying the best brown trout fishery in Australia, if not the southern hemisphere. Oh, without a doubt, I mean, so you just see the yeah. photos in the short clip there and, and Premier, it probably leads to a question, it is a unique fishery. So is it something that will be looked at and require specific rules and regulations or will they just fit under the current rules and regulations that we see, currently see for trout? Well, it'll be unique in the quality of the fishing will be unparalleled mm. anywhere and we have to protect that. Yep. But we want to open this up. We want it to be regulated as close to other, uh, other really important spots. Uh, Sonia might have a bit more detail on whether there'll be any specific things, mm. but as you say, well, we'll I, have to regulate it because the what's there is you, precious. You got, oh, they're, they're, I mean, this is, this is motorised. This is yeah. motorised boats. Yeah, uh, this is full wreck, wreck fishing. Yeah. There'll be limits and all those sorts of things sure. as well. Because that's and I think fishers want that. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, yeah. It's yeah definitely. Such yeah. a special place. Definitely. You want to make sure that it's there for yeah. the long term. Yeah, there's no term. water yeah. skiing, so we need a no. Yeah. That's exactly no right. Speed limit there. There'll be no. Jet skis and things of that nature. Yeah. <laughs> not that we're opposed to those, but this no, is something different. Not but not yeah, something yeah. precious. Yeah. And opening it up's taken a lot of work, uh, but we've got there. Yeah. Uh, and if we're re-elected, we'll be proud to do it. So the proposed location uh, is at the the end of North Jindavik Road. Yep. Uh, for that boat ramp and for those other important facilities alongside. Uh, and as you as you as you say, mm. if uh, if brown trout are your thing, then there's probably no better mm. place to very be. Very special. Mm. Yeah. So did you want to add anything to that? No, I was going to say that's exactly right. Yeah. We'll be we'll be looking at that, but obviously to ensure that this is preserved for future generations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As well. The consultation mm. will be very interesting on the rules and regulations yeah. because I think the majority of people would be with me is that you, you 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 can't kill one of those big trout. You know, they um, well, the, firstly they're the oldest population in Australia, 
um, you know, they, they've aged some at 10 years old. They normally aren't found at 10 years of age. Brown trout yeah. would normally be, yeah. you know, five or six years yeah. old. So they're obviously in a pristine waterway where they can survive beyond what their normal lifespan is. Um, you need to preserve them. Uh, you need to have the young ones coming mm. through as well. So, you know, if anything, if anything, I reckon at a bare minimum, you might have a slot limit of 30 to 35 and you're allowed to take one home for the fry pan, but, but that would be it. Yeah. You know, th this population, you, and the other thing is you don't want to spoil that lake by stocking it with, with um, mm. you know, with, yeah. with fish that are brought up in a farm. This is a wild population yeah. and it needs to be preserved, but it needs to be also enjoyed because, so uh, you yeah. know, it's did funny. Any, did any of those ones from the photo make it to the fry pan? No, or? no, they were all put <laughs> back. <laughs> no, I was. I, <laughs> oh, I had to ask. I was going to ask. Yeah, fair question. And, and, and what's the eating like when you get to that? Like, oh, fantastic. It? Because it's not something many people would have had. No, no, but they're fantastic. It doesn't matter what size the trout are. They're fantastic. If they get big or small, it doesn't matter. It's a bit like a calamari I was showing you some <laughs> during the break. People say, oh, you don't eat the big ones. You bet you eat the big ones. You know, it's, uh, the 35 calamari rings I got off one of those calamari. Oh, so it's, yeah, it's not bad. So this is one of those things where you, yeah. you do the hard work. You do the, there's, a, there's a clear vision, but you've got yeah. to do the work to make it real. Yeah. And that's exactly what we'll do. Yeah. Yeah. And be what a beautiful awesome oh, fishery. Oh, yeah, it looks a little day stunning. Trip from, day yep. trip from Melbourne, yeah. seriously, yeah. to a very, very, very yeah. special place. Um, people won't be flying in New Zealand anymore to go trout fishing. They'll be just hiking it down to, to near them south. I mm -hmm. think the pub's going to have to have an upgrade. <laughs> um, we're, we're gonna, they're yelling at us. We've only got about a minute. Uh, next announcement for angling clubs. This is These big. $1.2 million in grants. So yep. it's a fund. And angling clubs will be able to access those grants, grants of up to $10,000. Uh, and that's all about making sure they've got the facilities they need, wow. they've got the support they need to reach out into the community to encourage yeah. those those littlest Victorians all the way through to others who have perhaps not thought about becoming an angler. This is just a practical, easy way in which we can support great clubs. They're run by volunteers, they do amazing work. Yep. This is just about us saying thank you the best way we know how, which is to give them the capacity to grow. Yep. And as Nikki wow, knows, yeah. um, oh, yeah, Nikki, I yeah. see lots more women getting yeah, into yeah. we want, we want, as well. Yeah, we yeah. definitely want more women in the angling club, so I guess well, that well, will Nikki's play the hand. vice president of the club that turned 100 years yeah. old that you both recorded <laughs> a video for. Yeah, so, yeah, um, yeah. yeah we're absolutely. excited by that announcement. That's a great yeah. thing for all yeah. angling clubs. So. Yeah, yeah. Mm. makes a difference to these, these clubs. So. Yeah, definitely. Uh, all right, that's big, big news, absolutely big news. Uh, there's a lot more to come next on Talking Fishing. Talking fishing. Welcome back to Talking Fishing. Now, a little bit of mailbag before we get back into the announcements. Um, just looking a little bit. We, this happened last time. Every one of them is from N Mitchell at 3W.com.au. <laughs> Every one. Okay, we, we'll can that. All right, we'll can that. Let's, let's, um, let's get back into it's this. It's all good news tonight. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good news. No, cheerio to Neil. He's a great fan of talking fishing. Um, oh, hang on. I, I, I thought the last one was the big one. Um, they're getting bigger. Uh, look at Arcadia next on the list. Being fully self-sufficient is very, very important. Mm. But I'm going to let Sonia speak to this one. Okay. Yep. So um, Arcadia Hatchery up near Shepparton, uh, as, as um, Premier said, this is about being self-sufficient with our fish stock in Victoria going forward. And um, so what we're doing here is uh, we're going to be investing $10 million to uh, deliver the funding to make Arcadia self-sufficient. This will deliver stage three of the works at the Arcadia mm. Native Fish Hatchery. And what this means for Victoria is that we're going to increase fish production from 2 million to well over 6 million fish per year. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So That's it's amazing. pretty amazing numbers. Yeah. 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 I, I mentioned earlier on that um, 
when, when Jala wanted to build this property and buy, or buy this property and build it, um, you'd be able to see it from the moon. I think we've got a, another shot here we can show people at home. Um, so you can see the infrastructure this on the left from there. The moon. That's, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's right. This is yeah. from the moon. <laughs> and it's certainly not from a drone because it's too high. Um, but you can see where those red circles are. So the bottom, uh, the bottom paddocks there are all going to be what they call plankton ponds, which is yep. where all the babies are put. Um, and on the right hand side will be more of the broodstock ponds, which is all where all the mums and dads are kept. And people might think this is, you just, I mean, I'm on the Stobbs Creek and, and Arcadia Advisory Board, so I, I kind of know this stuff, um, you know, the ins and outs of it. And it's not just a, a little hole in the ground. Every one of those ponds that are built have concrete infrastructure to drain the ponds so that the fish that are, you know, the little babies that are growing in those ponds are then drained and put in a truck without any human contact. No nets, no nothing to get them on the truck. And then they're delivered from a truck into the waterways mm. with no human contact. So mm -hmm. it's absolutely brilliant for the fish. There's no damage to the fish. There's no damage to anything. Um, and, and you don't just dig a pond. I mean, there's yeah, a lot of infrastructure. It doesn't just happen, oh, yeah. Have you been up there, Nikki? Not yet, no. no. Um, it's, it, it is an amazing place to see the infrastructure yeah. that's underground, all the pipes, the, how they drain it, and that is, it's just an amazing place. So um, a question for you both. At the moment, uh, well, this year, 10 million fish were stocked. Um, until this infrastructure is built, there's a gap. We're, we're only producing, I think, including snobs, I think it's about three and a half million. The gap between that and 10 million fish, will that continue? It will, uh, yep. but the gap will get smaller and smaller as each sure. of these infrastructure, and I haven't finished yet, I've got some more to announce. Okay. But as the gap, well, the gap will close, and ultimately we won't need to be importing fish, we won't need to be buying fish from New from South Wales. From New South Wales, Wales yes. <laughs> it, it hurts us to do that. But <laughs> we have to do it now, yep. but with this plan, and particularly the next bit, we're able to, to to bridge that gap, make it smaller and smaller. So each year we fund in the budget whatever's required, yep. and those numbers vary from time to time. And the sure. totality of this package will mean those those numbers. We can't really predict what we'll need each and every year, yep. but that'll be that'll be paid for in the budget as as usual. Yep. And our fish order from New South Wales will shrink yep. as our um, hatchery capacity grows, yep. which is very good. Mm. Uh, there's. Two hatcheries in Victoria. Mm -hmm. Tell us about the next one. Well, the next one, of course, Snobs Creek. You mentioned it earlier on. Mm. It being sold off, it then came back because of a Labor government uh, under Braxy's leadership. We're going to invest another $5 million there yep. uh, to take the next step. So it's the next major stage of works. Uh, there's some 80-year-old ponds, uh, and we need to obviously upgrade those. We need to accelerate some of those works and if we're going to bridge that gap and be self-sufficient yep. as soon as possible. So playing a big part in that, that target of getting to $10 million, uh, and with that work, uh, and, and combined with Arcadia, that's how we can be confident that we'll get to that self-sufficiency, uh, sovereignty, if you like. So we'll have our own fish, so that we can keep our our catchments, our fisheries healthy, uh, and not have to be ordering fish in. Yep. So there's a whole lot of detail to this, uh, but for instance, we've already spent 2.8 million there. Yep. This an additional five, there's a master plan with stage development. Mm -hmm. This means we can fund the next major stage to deliver that outcome where we're not having to place fish orders anymore. Yep. Mm. Which Beautiful. I think is really good, yeah, especially yeah. from New South, New South Wales. <laughs> yeah, 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 I don't want that. Although, <laughs> I see you hanging around the New South Premier a little bit. Get along all right. Well, you can work together, you should. Yeah. But when it comes to self-sufficiency around you fish stocks, we fish. don't need no, to be buying no, their fish. It's like rugby league and AFL, isn't it? You just, <laughs> exactly some things right. we and just... I know, um, I was going to say, over the past couple of months, we've been stocking a lot of fish from the, the Snobs Creek yes. fish hatchery. So mm. um, we're doing that around the metropolitan yep. parks and lakes. Yep. And um, they're having a great time yep. doing mm. that. It's been a big yeah. part of our recovery after black summer bushfires. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of fish stocks yeah. come, come out of there. Yeah. And, and Sonia, I think we were talking earlier on too about um, the floods and it's and we have been talking about in, mm. in the last couple of episodes yeah. that there's still a lot of black water to travel down the Murray River and some of the tributaries and um, that, that is it's resulted in some native fish deaths so that 10 million fish per year is so important yeah. to probably yeah. never been more important and yeah. look, our, our yeah. thoughts are with all those flood affected communities yeah. that are still doing it yeah. very very tough absolutely um, all right next one uh, boat ramps it just keeps getting better for boat ramps, something that was neglected for decades is absolutely on the mend and you've got some announcements there. $14.9 million worth of priority boating projects yep. uh, out of the Better Boating Fund, as you would assume. 
We've already announced $7.2 million of these. Uh, that takes the total investment to $22.1 million. Uh, so I, I've, I've got a list here. Yep. Um, you're not the only one with this list, Dave. Uh, uh, Avalon Stage 2, Lime Burners Point Stage 2, Lake Boga, Werribee South, St Leonard's, French Island, Tankerton, uh, Schnapper Point, Mornington, Halqua Inlet, Torquay, Red Cliffs Boat Ramp, obviously near Mildura, uh, and Lanakuri. And I think that's all on my list. That's a good list. So mm, that's a pretty good pretty list. Good and yeah. they range from a couple of hundred thousand dollars through to some that are over two million. In fact, St Leonard's is at 2.8. Yep. So yeah. That's a really important package, $22.1 million, and we'll, we'll get that done as soon as we possibly can. I'm going to say a cheerio to the, I'm going to get this wrong, the former Minister for Ports, and he's a good friend of both sides. He was under Jeff Kennett, but Jeff Craig, who uh, is retired down at St. Land. He's getting a new pier and a new boat ramp if you're re-elected, so Jeff will be pretty happy about that, I reckon. Well, he might be in two minds about how he, how he votes. <laughs> 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 uh, Jeff, I'll talk to you tomorrow about that. I'll tell you. Um, that, that's fantastic, and, and, and the ones particularly down in, um, in Bass, Lang, Lang Lang, Adam, you were talking about Lang Lang. I mean, yeah. Tacklewell Cramman uh, was the gateway to those Western Port ramps, and so many good reports came from Lang Lang, and, and there's been issues down there, hasn't there? Yeah, well, seeing Lang Lang named on the list was, uh, was interesting because it seemed to be the forgotten part of Western Port. It is yeah. still insanely mm. popular as a land based yeah. destination down there. That will continue, but it'll be good to see boats being able to. To get put in there as well and enjoy those the flats fishing through there because it is a special should, fishery and it is quite unique we, for Western Port. Yep. We should just go through the full list. I, I, Sorry, I, I, yeah, I, we I forgot got to mention the <laughs> I forgot to mention the already announced but maybe not necessarily yep. certainly not consolidated. So there's 1.8 million for Lang Lang, 2.6 million for Turidan, yep. 2 million for Inverloch, yep. and 800,000 for Cow Stage Two. Yeah. And, and that adds mm. up to the total package. Inverloch's the one in the main town. I think, have you been to Mars Landing recently, yes, Sonia? I yes, did go which down is there. the one That's just right. out of town of Inverloch. Yep. So, yeah. so Inverloch's getting both their ramps upgraded. Mm -hmm. And don't ever go to Inverloch in January because you can't move. But that's a popular <laughs> place, and it's good to see some yeah. of these things oh, no, being done terrific. where they're needed. Yeah. You yeah. Know, it's, um, there's, there's one thing I think um, better boat in Victoria, and particularly, you know, hats off to Catherine Greck, who's the, the director there. Um, you know, so, someone wrote into Mailbag that, you know, those people are better boating, don't have boats and that. Catherine's got a boat. She was brought up with her dad <laughs> yep. fishing yeah, yep. the Maribyrnong for brim and, and uh, you know, and absolutely knows the facilities mm. and what's what's the priorities. And when I caught up with her recently, yeah. we were um, checking out um, just the the progress on one of the, the boat ramps. Mm. And when we left, she was actually heading off fishing herself, yeah. right? Yeah, 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 yeah. She was going straight to it. Yeah, yeah. 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 Tell you what, that's... Yeah, dream job. <laughs> uh, all right, we might take a break there. After the break, um, we're going to talk about commercial fishing. It's uh, something that's probably never, ever been announced, uh, I think, by any government, some initiatives for commercial fishing. So we're going to talk about that next on Talking Fishing. Talking Fishing. The Bo Morris Motor Yacht Squadron is a trailer boat and social club on Port Phillip Bay. The club has a great range of facilities including multiple boat ramps, ample car and trailer parking, boat wash and fish cleaning, fishing competitions and boat safety lectures, boating activities and club events, a restaurant and two bars. Easy launch and retrieval makes for a relaxing time on the water for you, your family and friends to enjoy. And boating memberships are now available. The Bo Morris Motor Yacht Squadron, the best trailer boat experience on the bay. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. Welcome back to Talking Fishing. Now, uh, normally at this stage of proceedings, every four years, uh, both parties give their announcements and I've got to say, I, I can't remember the last and the last election where there wasn't bad news for the commercial fishing industry and those days are over um you know bans on netting and i know there has been some bans on netting but we saw the map of australia earlier on in the program and there are issues all around australia except victoria but the balance is right and there is a, a really really good bunch of commercial fishers commercial netters down at corner inlet that work to a code of conduct yeah. that's now being put into regulation um, they're 
sustainable. They have some of the best fish that you can get in Australia. I've heard some of the like highest quality. Highest it's... quality. I mean, these guys just hand, yeah. you know, hand net. They treat their fish as if it's about to be put on your plate by the best waiter, you know, in the, in the best restaurant. So uh, from the sea to the, the table, it's absolutely, mm. the chain is just absolutely fantastic. And, uh, you know, a shout out to guys like Bruce Collis, Luke Anetta, Neville Clark, um, absolute ambassadors for the, that, that, um, that area. And it's just good to be able to sit here and say, you know, that there's, that war's over. Um, there is no banning on, on uh, nets No, there anymore. isn't. But we should also say that we're not diminishing the pain of those yeah. commercial fishers who, you know, they've, they've been through a very difficult time. We yeah. sought to act with them, uh, to, to act um, in, good, in good faith. Yeah. Uh, but at no point do we diminish that this has no. been a challenge. These eight years have been challenging for them. Yeah. But the sustainability is there. It's yeah. just, mm -hmm. it's obvious. This has worked. It was the right thing to do. Not yeah. easy, but the right thing yeah. to do, as is uh, so often the case. Yeah. So good to see that there's no bans, but um, well, it's the other way. It's We're the other on way. Giant support. So there's a million yeah. dollars for aquaculture support. One million. One million. Wow. Which is a nice. It's it's a start. Yep. It may well. Well, you thought one million was good. I thought it was yeah, good. Right, exactly. yeah. I, I, wasn't, I wasn't quite sure. It, well, given some of the numbers, well, some of the numbers we've been talking about, a million compared to seem a thirty very... million dollar buyback of exactly. licenses, yeah. this well, has gone the other about, way. Yeah. A million dollars is pretty it's, good. It's yeah. about making sure that. Um, we, we've got the best industry, the most sustainable industry, yeah. and, we've, and we really, that corner, corner uh, inlet, corner inlet yeah. uh, example of the highest quality produce, yeah. like it's literally landing on your plate, yeah. we think there's really significant opportunities. So, Victorian Fishing Authority uh, and the sector, uh, they're going to work really closely together. To, where, where can that money be invested? Where yeah. can we get the best outcomes, yeah. the jobs and the highest quality, the highest quality product Mm. Uh, and then we might have a little bit more to say about how we publicise that to the world. Mm. Mm. Okay. Um, one of the things I think Victoria is about 4% of Australia's aquaculture, so we are behind the eight ball. There's no, there's no doubt about that. Um, one of the things I'd love to see, Adam and Nikki, um, and I'm very jealous of this, but Queensland aquaculture have the species mm. Cobia. Which are, oh, yeah. Now, I've never eaten one. Have you? I haven't eaten one, yeah, but I'm jealous of it, yeah. Well, I think they're like the northern species of kingfish. Yes. Mm. But they grow them in, in, mm. um, in aquaculture ponds in Queensland. Now, we, we produce barramundi here in Victoria. Werribee and Geelong, there's barramundi farms. We need cobia. And it's, mm. a, it's a cheerio to Dallas De Silva, who now <laughs> runs uh, Queensland fisheries. That we're coming to get you. We're coming to get, <laughs> coming to get we're you. We're coming cobia. for your cobias, and, yeah. And uh, a million dollars from the, from, the, um, from the Labor Party if they're re-elected to, to go into growing that. Aquaculture's, um, y you know, we, we talked about removing the nets in some of our things. Uh, in some of our bays and inlets, but aquaculture can really, really supplement that, um, you know, that food that's perhaps not coming from the nets in the bays. Yeah. And like I said, there's aquaculture farms, there's trout farms all around. I mean, Victoria produces the best trout out of some of our trout farms, but there are so many other species. And it's one of the reasons we're seeing um, fish, the small fish that uh, we've used to stock in Victoria that come from New South Wales hatcheries, those New South Wales hatcheries are now going, we don't want to give you the babies to stock for fishing. We want to grow them to adult size and export them. So, um, but there's also a, you know there's a local some, market to fill as well. So there's there's a lot of jobs um, yeah. and a lot of trade to be developed here. Yeah. And a million dollars to to work out how do you go to the next step. Yeah. Or indeed, what species aren't we growing that we could? Yeah. All of that's really important, and that'll be a proper partnership with industry. We'll sit down and yeah. work through that because that, they'll know and understand where the market's going. Yeah. But. Uh, I think letting people know what we do best as well is important. So I have a bit more to say about that. Yeah. And some great research opportunities. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Yeah, 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 good point. Yeah. Cobia. Remember that? Yeah, yeah. Cobia, Cobia, run it down. Cobia, I'll yeah. give Anastasia a call tonight. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On the recipe for Cobia. Yeah, okay. No All right, let's keep moving on. Um, there's a bit of an oyster trial. Sonia, you were down there yep. not so long ago, yeah. but you've got an announcement to extend that. Yeah, th this is terrific. Um, this is about a, an oyster trial that's going on in Lakes Entrance um, by the local Indigenous corporation down there. Um, they're called Sydney Rock Oysters. Now mm. we were thinking perhaps yeah. we need to, to rename re that, rename I reckon. That. There's no change there, I think. Yeah. The, the, um, the pilot started, I think it was about a month ago. And um, it's going to be a three year trial of the Sydney Rock Oysters, grown you know, naturally down there in Lakes Entrance. I think it's probably the southernmost point that these rock um, oysters are grown. Sydney, actually. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. that's right. Um, so feasibility 
studies are going on, the trial is taking place. So we are here to announce that we will um, contribute $250,000 to that Indigenous run oyster farm. Wow. Fantastic. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. I think we spoke about the trial that if that yeah. succeeded, which certainly it sounds like it's going to succeed, um, you can go to Lakes Entrance now and even though the nets were removed from Gippsland Lakes, there's that big commercial fishing industry yep. down there which is in Commonwealth water. So all your, mm. your flathead, your prawns, your salmon, your gummy shark, your snapper yep. all still come into the docks there. But now you're going to be able to go down and get your dozen oysters in the mm. in the tray, Amazing, shucked or unshucked. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. What yep. are you, Adam? Shucked or unshucked? Would you buy? I would buy yeah. shucked. Yeah, I know sure. because I've seen oh. because I've seen you try to eat with chopsticks. <laughs> I couldn't imagine you. Not worth watching. He needs no, all the help he can get. Or yeah, I, I couldn't imagine you shucking an oyster. Yeah, no, nah, no, nah, the holes in the hands and you know, from the knife, <laughs> and that would be. Um, either of you shucked an oyster before? I haven't, no. No? I've, I've, I've eaten one or two. Yeah, yeah. No, no, yeah. Someone else has shucked them. But yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, I, Next I week, if we've got Matthew Guy on, we're going to ask him similar questions about lobster. Yeah. But, um, no, but, but we did that last time, didn't we? Yeah. We did. But, Nikki, shucked an oyster I have. Before. I've shucked about 40 of them. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. For my sister mainly. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. For your sister? Yeah, well, she loves oysters, so I brought her back a bag and shucked them. Good oh, practice. Yeah. That's, that's, that's I amazing. need a sister like that. <laughs> wow. I, what, I need an actor. That's just brilliant. <laughs> Family, yeah. great. Yeah. So this is really good. This yeah. is giving to Gunai Kunai uh, yeah. down there the funding they need to take that next step. And yeah. I think this is going to be a fantastic success. Yeah, yeah absolutely. A really, really good yeah. success. And there's jobs in this uh, right. and really high quality product. Yep. Yeah. Good stuff. Um, is that the end of the show? We need to wrap it up. We need we to do. wrap it up. So it's the end of my list. So it's well, well, yeah. <laughs> and my earpiece is broken. So there you go. Appreciate you coming in. Um, it's a pleasure. Premier, Minister, thank you very much. Great. Uh, it's it for Talking Fishing. Hope you enjoyed the show. We have some good weather coming up towards the end of the week. When you're out there getting some cracking snapper or your bag of whiting, please reflect on how good we've got it. Until we see you again next week on Talking Fishing, please stay safe on the water and enjoy your fishing. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. We got all you need, just take a look. Watch those fish jump on your hook. So just relax and take your time. Enjoy the show, then drop us a line. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. Talking fishing. Have a good weekend, Mr. Walker. You too, son. <laughs>